All right, guys, what is up? Game number two between Pox Junkie and uh, the Ravager. Again, same battle groups. We have the Ravager on the top hand side playing SL uh, meta, I think, maybe beasts, more, more so meta. And then on the right hand side, we have Pox Junkie playing a split faction between FS and Kather Forest Wizards. And again, I do have uh, Rorschach and Saska Speed to help me commentate. Back What's again. up, guys? Yeah. Let's see. We kind of see the same deploys from the Ravager. Again, the Angel of War and the Mix Broadlord. Wow, the Intensifies are ready on a five-turn cooldown. That was insanely quick. Usually, I feel like it, it, it takes a while, but it's already really soon. Dude, that is so hard to kill. 83 HP, but yeah, okay, you get two defense. After the Intensify, you're at, let's see, it doesn't give you any more defense, no. So you have two defense plus SL bonus, means you're at four defense. With the Hunter Walker, you're at six defense, right? Plus, uh, you're at somewhere around 70 health. <laughs> if he procs the melee specialist 3 2, you're at technically 9 defense. Holy cow. And that's with no type of like additives, right? Like no extra boosting of any sort. In this map, I think if you are Pox Junkie, you want to sit back as much as you can, trying to set up with your relic, throne of the circle, with your mages. And if you. If you are Saraton, you want to attack early so that your opponent doesn't get to set up. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. I think that um, Pox Junkie is going to be the one who wants to stay back, hang back, and ramp up while the Ravager wants to rush if he can. He already also, he, he saw it himself, right? He, he thinks the same thing. He's going to say, I need to rush. I'm playing the Cane Slipped, who also has warding, by the way. So that kind of fucks things over. Um, and I'm guessing next turn, not this turn, obviously, but next turn, he's going to most likely go in with at least one of his champions into that font to take it away. Yeah, I think we're witnessing the power of Mix Bradlord in this game, because if you massive leap with this champion in the font, he can sit there for days. There is no way Pox Junkie can kill him anytime soon, like game one. He couldn't get this, he couldn't get rid of the, he couldn't get rid of the Bradlord, so he lost the game. Yep. He doesn't have enough damage as a thing, right? He can stun, but so he can stall a little bit, but he just doesn't have damage to get through these. Not with the healing of the Manticore behind. Yeah, he's going to put the Chain Fae over there just to maybe help if he can. Brings his tank over as well. He's, he's so hard. He's like, stop. Get away. He could think of like maybe moving up with the Inspector to, uh, I don't know, stall somehow. Like say, hey, I want you to attack me. Put my Inspector at half health. But to be fair, I don't think there are many decks right now that can counter an um, early aggressive uh, mixed Bradlord. There are not that many decks that can kill this champion fairly quick so that he doesn't cause a lot of trouble. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, seven speed, too. I mean, he doesn't have that much damage. You can also just think of like ignoring it, right? Um, well, it kind of does. With Hunter, with Hunter Small, he has 13 damage. That's not that low. Eh, uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I guess. I would say 13 is like medium. I would put like 15 and up, I would say it's starting to be actual good damage, and anything below 15 is like average. Um, but I'm not sure. I've never really thought about that, like where damage thresholds are for, you know, where you would say is high or low damage. One thing yeah. to know on the uh, mixed brood lord is that uh right now it is illuminated but it usually has three defense and if you're playing it in a full faction sundered lands deck like he is that's five defense on top of the hunter small trigger on everything so it is currently bugged so he has technically seven death as well yeah both of them both of them has... <laughs> see two three four five six and then three four five six seven yep they both of them have hunter you can I think I should not say this, but if you run a mixed hurricane and you can give the mixed Bradlord also Hunter, uh, how is it called? Hunter Walker. Think... But I don't think it's Hunter awesome. Walker exactly. Does it stack though? Yeah, of course it stacks with Hunter Small. Yeah. Really? Oh, I thought the Hunters because it says at least 
This does not stack with other Hunter X abilities, but it might be bugged, right? So It is. Just like you saw there, he did the massive leap and it did 10 damage because of the Hunter small. That shouldn't really proc either. Depending on how, uh, depending what uh, Sokolov said when he addressed it uh, way back in the day. Oh. Wait, so the leap it goes on the 80 Nora champion and procced it. That's interesting. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I have also tested myself that the hunter abilities do stack. Well, it does say deal damage. It doesn't say basic attack, so that's not exactly a bug. It's worded very vaguely. I guess. Eh, whatever. Alright, so let's see. He has to kill the Broodlord so that he can move over and help his shrine. But, you know, he has to get through this giant brick first. Well, it is on minus one defense right now. But I'm not a big fan how Poxchunk is using his Novas right now. He hit his own champions twice. Has he used the soften yet? Yeah, okay, use the soften already. He's at minus six defense technically at the moment. He can stun just so he can kill it next turn. Yeah, he stuns now, and now he can. He can't even hit, yeah. Wait, no, the inspector as well as the enforcer can still attack once. Oh, and it was stun right there. Could he have double tapped and gotten the kill if he didn't stun? Because, yeah, he would have had nine more damage. Yeah, I think if he had, instead of using stun there, if he would have just attacked with the enchanter. All right, whatever. That's, that's the kill. He got the kill, but his avatar is rust at the same time. Though I'm not sure if he's going for the relic or straight ahead for the avatar. I find it a bit ballsy to go for the avatar this early in the game. Well, he... Hmm. He, I think he's going for the um, the shrine. It's just that the cannon manic over toward the champions, right? Which makes it always hard to uh, double tap with the cannon. I mean, you can still fuel rage it and stuff, so it's okay. But because it keeps running away from the shrine in a way, you know what I mean? Ten damage. Hmm. Oh shit! Okay. Well, there's the slow from the um, thorn trap. And now all the other champions can come down and start attacking, so... I think it was a misplay going for the avatar right ahead, to be honest. Mm, the theory behind it was pretty cool. He knows he can't just... Um, like, there was five champions in the thing, he has no range, just jumping in like that is hard. So the theory behind, like, hey, I need to just go send one champion over to stall him. He was hoping it would last two turns, but it died right away. And then just rush the shrine. Cause like, what else is he going to do? Just stall behind? Or just move all the champions in to kill one champion if he can? I don't know. It's hard to go against all range, you know? Especially with one And this one map, <clears throat> this map especially, doesn't kind of... There's no real value to not camping on this map. Exactly. And I think what he was trying to do... One, I don't think he thought Broodlord was going to be able to be killed that turn yeah. from full HP. And then, second of all, I don't think... You know, it's a, it's the Markoth strategy of why do a long drawn out battle when you can do a quick victory. <laughs> yeah, I think he underestimated Junkie's ability on killing the the Broodlord. He thought, okay, maybe I can sit on his front for a couple of turns, oh, and then I can rush his avatar. But he got killed r relatively fast. He got sacrificed, and now he's in a difficult position. He could still switch. Right? I mean, he could just say, okay, fuck it, I'm not going to go for the shrine anymore and just switch directions. He can kill the Chained Fae here now. Um, and then maybe he could, like, go for the Overmind, which is at minus one defense as well. If he can, like, drive. No, it's three three AP on the slip. Otherwise, you could think of, like, manicking and killing the Overmind, but I guess not. This is Battle Leader, yeah. He's Battle Leader on the Angel, so he can get plus one damage by killing the Chained Fae. But no cleanse in SL other than purge, but I don't think he plays purge. Well, he might. Purge is kind of rare, though. Both the Angel and the um, Cannon Slip have such low speed that I think both of them will die in the next turns. 
So to be honest, I think this game has already been decided. Yeah, for sure close. But I th okay, I think he'll. This turn is killing Chain Fei, and with the slipped, he can um, get on to the Mind Shredder, right? And he can heal with a Manticore on the um, slipped if he wants. He was getting one. Well, it might be. Uh, I don't know about the Chain Fei play, but it might be a Hail Mary if he has uh, Quickening in his deck, because he could technically Battle Drum and then. Do a lot of attacks into that shrine. Well, that's true. He can double. Attack yeah, I don't think that you go for the chain fey either. Either you go for the avatar one hundred percent, or you try to run away. What's the cooldown? Or I don't know the cooldown. But I wonder what the um how much time he has. All right, he's a fuel rage. I'm guessing he's gonna double fuel rage quicken. Now warding, he can't quicken. He I bet he wanted to quicken there. Yeah, there's the quicken. He wanted to use that on the uh, slipped. Is he charging? He is. And also, a thing is, it's it's hard to get rid of the ch uh, the slipped just because of the um, the warding. So he he might oh nine damage or oh nine help. I mean, does he have two spells? I know he runs Tornado, but I don't think it's enough to kill the Avatar. I wonder what the cooldown is, because he, he rushed pretty quick. It's turn 15. Can he transfigure? Hmm, that's a big question. Hmm. I wonder if healing the Angel of War was a better idea there or not. Because like I said, the warding does help keep the slipped alive, so he's hard to kill. But he's also at minus one defense. Hmm. And maybe just trying to keep the Angel of War alive and being like, fuck it, you know? Oh, he's going um, Disbelief on the Mind Shredder instead of the ability. Interesting. Using Magic, magic Nova right here will damage his own shrine, so I don't think that would be a safe choice. Yeah, true. On the uh, on the idea of disbelief, it is magic damage while Shatter summons a psychic. So if he's doing a wizard deck, he might have some amp in here just mm -hmm. to help overall with the disbelief. He didn't deploy before he transfigured. That's a bit dangerous. He can only, yeah, he can only run away that far. What does he have? Does he have pacify or something here? Just all? I, in the games I played against Pox Junkie, I haven't seen him using this spell that pacifies the enemies, champions. Yeah, they reclaim. It's either, yeah. Recla I mean, th he wouldn't have to reclaim this turn because they can't even get to the, the shrine. Um, but next turn, maybe. Crown, or was it not crown? The honor coin? 10? 10? For the commander. There's also not that much AP gain in SL, right? Like, they have Benediction, and that's kind of it. They have Indignation as well, which is like pseudo AP gain, but sometimes it's kind of hard to use. There's the Engage as well. It's so close yeah. so far. I mean, Tornado does do um, 12 damage, right? So that's full. Also, sand spray is up, isn't it? So tornado plus sand it spray is. is that kill? I think a spell plus sand spray and tornado would probably be a kill. So we'll have to see what happens. Yeah. There's the sand spray. Ten, and then eight, eight. Right. There you go. That's GG. Nice. Very close. Double sandstorm for the win.